Hi friends, today I will expand on the cool work I designed earlier using the classic family template. This time I will use a design the family template to create a curved and sloped culvert. Like shown in the drawing, I will keep the culvert simple to save time and not make this video too long. But the principles we will cover apply to more complex cross section as well. So I have opened the Revit Adaptive Family Template and I am using my trusty Epic Pen to sketch out our cross section. This will help us highlight the key points and parameters needed to create our masterpiece. The blue point will be our adaptive point. In this case I will only need one adaptive point. This is the placement point and will be used to connect the section to a reference point later. The pink points will be reference points. This culvert must contain two nested families, since creating a hollow section within the same family isn't feasible. So, one family for the solid form, which will be the outer green lines, and one for the void inside represented by the orange lines. So, the sketch is done. Selecting the work plane where our points will be placed is important because I want to rotate uh, our culvert section perpendicular to the host curve. Therefore, I select the floor plan as the work plane for placing our reference points. If I had chosen a front view or another type of view, like I've done in previous videos, the rotation would have been off. So this step is crucial. I've now used the reference point tool and placed out a reference point. Once placed, I will select the reference points and make it adaptive. So before placing the reference points, I set the work plane on the adaptive point. This will decide the direction the reference points can move or the direction the built-in offset parameter will move. So the work plane I just selected gives me the desired moving direction for the reference points. Very important to pay attention to the selected work plane for every reference points. So I've been fast forwarding a bit. Here I'm just placing out the reference points, so it matches the sketch. So next, connect the reference points with the spline tool. Select two reference points and hit the spline command. A straight line will be created, eventually forming the desired geometry. All right, all done with points and splines. Now I will set up the parameters and formulas that will allow you to change the cross section geometry by adjusting the numerical values, making it a parametric design. So the user defined parameters I will place in the dimension category are height, width and thickness for the wall, floor and roof. And I will make them instance based. I have created a video explaining the difference between type and instance based. Click the link. So it is always a good idea to have a solid parameter system with logical naming and placement of the parameters, making it easier for the next person to use and change it if necessary. The next parameters will be placed in the other category, since they will consist of formulas driven by the user defined parameters, and they cannot be changed by the end user. I need these to what um, called support parameters to be able to make our profile parametric. For instance, the distance between the adaptive point and the reference points in the negative direction will have half the value of the width and it will be negative. So I need to create parameters based on the width and make it negative. We do that for all the reference points in my profile, making the family parametric. This approach is a bit different from the classic family method, where I use the reference planes and dimension lines to control the geometry. In the adaptive environment, I build the geometry using reference points and reference points relative to one another and of course uh, splines between the reference points. So we are just finishing up the last parameter in the other category. When we are all done with our parameters, now I need to associate them or connect them to the reference points. We select a reference point, go into the properties menu, find the offset built in parameter and all the way to the right there is, there is a little button. Press that and a list of all the created formulas appears. We select the correct parameter for the reference point. Once the parameter is connected, you can see that the reference points 
change position. Before moving on, let's do some flexing. This means we would like to change the value for our parameters to check if the reference points and the geometry behave as we intended. Flexing allows you to avoid reaching the end of creating a complex family only to discover that it doesn't work properly. By testing and checking each step along the journey, you can identify and address any issues early on. Taking it step by step ensures a smoother and less frustrating experience during the family creation process. So, looks, uh, looks solid. Time for the next step. We open a new adaptive family template. This will be the host family for our two nested families. Purchase it before loading it into our host family. So, I have created a video on what Perch is and why you should do it. Just click the link below. Back uh, to our profile, but now I will save it as a void. Remember, I can't have a hollow section in my profile. I need to make two separate families, one for the solid and one for the void. We delete some of the splines and, and we are only left with what will be the void. We again open up the, um, the profile and delete the void splines and load it back into the family. All right, we are now in the host family, which is a new generic adaptive family where I have loaded the two nested families. I then place uh, three reference points on the XY work plane. I make them adaptive and create a spline through them. Remember, the adaptive points are placement points and used to position the culvert in the Revit main project. They will determine the length and curvature of the bridge when the user places the three adaptive points. Let's go ahead and set up our parameters. We do have nested families, so the parameters that exist in that family need to be set up in the host family as well if the intention is that the end user is going to be able to change the parameters in the nested families. So we set them all up. We need the same parameters like height, thickness, floor, thickness, roof, and thickness, wall. With and also we will set up uh, two rotation parameters that will rotate the start and end of the cross section. I have placed two reference points on the spline, making it a hosted reference points. It snaps to the spline when I hover over it and it turns blue. Once placed, the reference points are noticeably smaller, indicating they are hosted to the spline. So the reference points are subject to the position of the host geometry. In our case, it will follow the movement of the spline by default. The hosted points provide a work plane perpendicular to their host when placed on an edge or line, which is what I will utilize here. So when placing our profiles on the spline and connecting them to the reference point, I'm placing them using the profile's adaptive point. The profile will be perpendicular to the curve and since I created the profile in floor plan view, I will be able to rotate it perpendicular to the curve. I have placed out the void profile. Next is the actual culvert profile. So the two reference points on the spline have been connected to the rotation parameter, meaning I can rotate by changing the numerical value in the rot A and rot B parameter. So we just drag the reference points to the end of the spline. The reference points contain the profile of the culvert. So far, so good. So let's do a quick flex of the rotation parameter. We change the rotation A to 25. Absolutely perfect. Moving forward, we're going to create the geometry. First, the void. We select the two voids profiles and the spline and use the create form tool to create the geometry that will follow the spline. We do the same for the culvert geometry. Now I will use the void to cut the geometry. And this culvert is really starting to take form. So let's quickly add a material parameter and associate it to the geometry by, um, by selecting the culvert and finding the built-in parameter in the properties menu. We continue to type in numerical values for our parameters. We need to do this before associating them to the nested families. Just um, there you go. And next is 
uh, to make this family parametric, I need to connect the hosted parameters to the nested. So I select the covert uh, cross sections that are placed out and start associating, associating the nested parameters to the hosted. We do the same for the void uh, cross section family. So I now have a fully parametric culvert. I do a little bit of flexing on the rotation to see if it works. Just perfect. Back to zero. And then I load it into our Revit main project and place it out on a face. As you can see, the placement points is the adaptive points. So I can decide the curvature for our culvert. Let's um, add a material, concrete B35. And I do some more flexing to see if the rotation is working. Absolutely perfect.